G'day, I'm Ash. Hope you're doing fantastically well. Sorry if I sound a little bit down today, but uh, following on from yesterday's video in Boomerang, you can see that on the cards above, we are going to talk about the i180S. I briefly showed this in yesterday's video, and it is subject to, well, my scrutiny today. Essentially, it's got a single 8mm plate behind the pilot there. Protection analysis isn't too pretty. It's an aircraft. You shoot things with it, and, you know, it takes a lot of damage. But it's a premium rank 2 Soviet fighter, battle rating 3.0, and this thing has the Boomerang's old flight model, and it at least used to be listed in the CDK files as having the Boomerang's old flight model, which is quite funny. Regardless, it has a better engine, and it does come with bombs, so there is that option as well. And yeah... This machine is quite quirky, and I despise it well. Its existence in its entirety. Now, it was given as a reward during update 1.87 Locked On as a reward for the 2019 Battlefield Engineer event. But, all nose mounted machine guns on the top there, double wing spars, an interesting layout and wing design, but ultimately it is powered by the Tomansky M88R, which is a radial 14 cylinder air cooled engine with 950 horsepower and a takeoff power of 1101. There isn't really much else to say about the vehicle aside from the fact that it's got two 12.7s and two 7.62s, and it does get access to this uh, summer camouflage in green, but honestly, Having it in red just makes the thing look even better. And considering they only made three uh, variants, or a handful of variants of this particular aircraft, to test whether or not this would be the direction for the Polycarpov's uh, fighter design, in and of itself it only gets 372 uh, research reward rate and a 420 uh, lions uh, rate as well. It doesn't get combat flaps, has takeoff and landing, doesn't have air brakes and doesn't have an arrestor gear. Mind you, it is a tail dragging aircraft. The wings rip at 670, the gear rips at 260, and let's jump straight into the match. Takeoff run isn't too great, but for what it is, you know, three tons in weight. Here we go, first in, and let's try and take out this P-66 over here with potato aim. Come on. Drop the throttle, give him the old spray one, two. Don't even get the hit, but now I have to worry about my wings. Remember how I said that was a 660 uh, rip rate? Nearly managed that, so up back into the vertical we go. Maintain all that energy. It's not really a, a turn fighter, but it's also not really a boom, boom and zoomer, if you understand what I mean. The aircraft climbs okay. The engine is probably its strongest uh, power, but you really have to watch it as it does lock up at higher uh, altitudes and... The engine really starts to fail and overheat quite quickly once you reach about 4,000 meters. So staying anywhere between 3,000 and 4,000 is probably your best go-to. Now, potato aim over here. I only managed to get a critical hit on that guy. And in fact, I don't even think a critical hit. The whole entire team has come in to try and, you know, take this guy down. Corsair comes in, and I just want to showcase this clip because <laughs> they basically implode on each other. That's it to this clip. Uh, the rest of the, everything I looked at basically died to friendlies. Jumping into an actual match is often the best way to do it. So today we're going to showcase one full match. Uh, sorry, as I'll tab there, that little bit of flickering. Can't control that with recording. This is a decent fighter. You know, nose mounted guns make it probably the best thing out there. The gear goes up on time. It isn't all weather open to. to elements a cockpit so that's quite interesting uh, it's got a decent enough uh, climb rate due to the supercharger although you won't see that unless you're using wartime emergency power or over a certain altitude if you want to have that turned on use manual en engine control i don't personally don't really see the point in using manual engine control unless you're playing simulator um and the engine does tend to overheat and it does have pretty poor rudder control however it flies exactly like the, the boomerang used to just very twitchy very just controllable and generally you know has a really great roll rate and well this thing can carry bombs by the way and i've been seeing a few of these out and about as the other premiums come out but the battle pass itp seems to out dwarf this thing even though this was one of the battlefield engineer rewards 
Anyway, the map I'm on is quite condensed. You're basically climbing into the enemy aircraft right off the bat, so you probably reach about 2,000 meters by the time you actually start engaging the enemies here. And this is where I like to really play this thing. As aggressive as possible and in your face as possible because this thing, well, it can't really take a hit to the engine, nor can any aircraft really, but this one relies on its engine quite heavily. Without that engine, you become a brick pretty quite uh, fast. The vehicle doesn't float or glide like many other aircraft types. Most of the weight is balanced on the front, and unfortunately, that's where most of the weight is. So you'll see me want to go for a, uh, a cheeky landing later, but first, there's a Fock Wolf up here. And we might give him the one, two. We'll give him the tap. There we are. Beautiful. Pilot snipe. Everything's fantastic. Next aircraft to come in. 109 that is thinking he's going after this P-63 over here. And to be fair, my aim is utter potato. I don't know how I didn't kill this guy earlier. Unfortunately, yeah, the 109 F1 gets a lucky hit on that P-63 and sets him on fire. So with a few more bursts, we get lucky again. And we also get visited by a J-22A. So why the hell not? Let's go for a bit of a dogfight again. I will get you. You are mine. How do you hit me and damage uh, and put holes in my left wing? Just a matter of time now. The enemy anti-air is opening up and unfortunately he loses all controls. So I do apologize to the person who actually managed to hit him like that. I just hit the sorry button. Alas, in hindsight, I should probably left him to die. But in that situation, he basically damaged me. And now it's trying to run away from the AAA. Now... It is a incredibly interesting designed aircraft. You know, it began in 1938 and they really wanted to meet a design requirement for the Soviet Air Force at the time. And they really decided to modify the existing I-16 chassis, have a new engine in it, and, well, have a new wing design for it as well. You know, unfortunately, it was plagued by many accidents and this, coupled with the arrival of new Soviet fighter designs, pretty much ended the I-180's uh, service life and history within the Soviet Air Force, which, you know, led to the project being cancelled at the end of 1940. Now, prior to the cancellation, the I-180S was only built in very li limited numbers. Around 13 of them were built, including prototypes of different varying configurations, from cannons to different wing configurations, fixed versus non-fixed landing gears, and so on and so forth. But, we're going to go take a landing, this is probably the best part of uh, having a map so sort of tight and condensed. Really, it doesn't take that long to really get back to the airfield. And having said that, the enemy players can really use this to their advantage and they can obviously hide around their airfields. Uh, again, this is just one of the maps where the runways are so close together when you take off, you're basically at 2,000 meters before really engaging any targets. Alas, what can you do? Although this thing was a part of a crafting event, a lot of people ended up picking it up. It was the low tier aircraft and people generally had an interest in what this big shiny Russian red thing was. It's a bit like a Yak uh, 3 in a way. I don't know, Russian aircraft painted in red just suited for the early Soviet times. And uh, we'll watch this Yak 1 incoming too. Here it goes. Sorry, Yak 1, I meant ITP. I mean, they look fairly similar, I guess. Yep, they managed to land alright. Climbing back up to altitude, however, meets our new standard. We're going to go chase after that 109. And that 109 we definitely are chasing. 3,500 meters approaching basically the area or altitude that I want to start just keeping uh, below. There isn't, to my knowledge, an oxygen bottle available in this vehicle, although I haven't really taken an in-depth look at the cockpit. So whether or not the pilot had access to oxygen, especially for high altitude, is really something that I haven't really looked at. But here it is, a 109 that's climbing off the side after landing at his airfield. This is an E7 variant, this is the Japanese one. Quite a lethal machine, and I do the absolute unthinkable. Right, we're closing in on him. Possibly, he's probably going to turn around towards us in the near uh, future here any time now he's probably going to realize so at this stage i need to gain as much speed as i possibly can because altitude is life insurance and speed is the key to victory i don't think that's how that quote goes but anyway he's turned around he's realized that i'm in the area 
And I really want to just bait him towards the friendlies. So we've got four kills already. What is the worst that can happen, right? Well, we can avoid the first lot of his volley. We're going to pull directly up. We're going to pull the, the takeoff flaps to slow ourselves down and make us more maneuverable. Lay off and uh, make a silhouette as narrow as possible. He nearly got us there. Pull back around again. Uh, there we go. With high uh, speed for the flaps. Pull back over. Try and get onto his six. He's having none of it. Okay, we need to narrow our profile and keep it narrow. There we go. At this point, I realize, hmm. Okay, so he's got a better elevator than I do. I should have known this from the outset. It's a 109 at high altitude. Here we go. Let's pull directly back into the friendlies that are climbing up after him and let them have a bit of a tango with him. Maybe he'll get distracted and we'll get lucky and get the last kill on him. Ultimately, I am chasing the ace. However, that's not necessarily that important. Oh. LA5 gives it a go. ITP is also giving it a go. 109 is pulling off to the left. Oh dear, I can see what's happening now. 109E. Okay, give it the old DAC. 1-2, one, 1-2. Two, one, two. Oh bugger. You've gone head on. Don't go head on, kids. That's just a recipe for disaster.